So I'm going to keep my own introduction brief and move quickly into our first case study uh, of Reality Ends Here. And we'll have Jeff Watson, researcher, as well as, um, uh, as, well as Tracy Fullerton, the chair of the Interactive Media Department at USC, talking about this interesting 120-day alternative reality game in which they forge serendipitous connections uh, between new students entering um, the university and talk a little bit about the transformative potential about community-based games. So uh, please welcome Tracy and Jeff. Hi everybody, thanks for making it back for lunch on time. Uh, Jeff and I are here today to talk uh, about uh, experimental game that may or may not have been played in the School of Cinematic Arts this past fall. Uh, where we work, um, the USC uh, School of Cinematic Arts is a very old institution and it's really no stranger to technology actually, um, since film is so deeply ingrained with, with various types of technologies. Um, but interestingly, uh, it's a school that um, sort of loves that, uh, that kind of history. And um, when we recently got a revamp of the school, we got a brand new building, um, they took the opportunity to uh, make the school look exactly like it used to, but bigger, and hidden inside the walls of this sort of ancient looking uh, studio-like institution are sort of all digital facility. Um, so it's kind of this funny thing where they sort of have a reverence for the past, uh, um, but uh, you know, also for, for the future. Um, and you know, our students are, are similar in that way. They, um, they come in with these dreams of sort of a Hollywood, uh, uh, you know, this sort of future history um, they, they, that they've written for themselves. Um, and that history has this sort of glamour to it. They think of themselves as sort of the lone filmmakers, right? They're going to come in, or media makers, and they're going to they're going to be the star, and they're going to you know work on their own pieces. And and really, um, part of our job uh, is to say, hey, this is really not what media making of the future is about. It's about this. It's like this massive explosion of potential and ideas and platforms and uh, things that are going on. And so uh, the school itself has uh, several different divisions. It's divided into divisions like production and animation and interactive media, um, writing, things like this. But a lot of times students, you know, they kind of try to hold on to that dream, that sort of solo dream, if you will. Um, when they come into the school. And we know that that's not what the future is going to look like. So um, the dean, who is a very forward-thinking dean, uh, founded something. Because this is what you do in academia. I don't know how many people here are academics, but when you're you know, an academic, what you do when you see a, uh, uh, something you need to solve is you get a committee together, right? Because that's really the most effective thing that you could do. Um, uh, yeah, see, there's some academics out there. Um, so, the, so the dean f uh, uh, created this this committee uh, to sort of uh, address the issues of uh, jump starting from day one collaboration uh, between the the different uh, disciplines that make up the the cinema school. And those disciplines are, uh, as I mentioned, you know. Um, they're sort of historically there, but they're also sort of exploding and changing and overlapping now with the, the new digital media that we're, that uh, all, of, all of the disciplines are uh, integrating. Um, and so we also wanted to encourage this kind of experimentation across all of those different practices from, again, from day one. And we wanted to connect students um, to the faculty and the alumni and um, the industry that surrounds them in Los Angeles. And so, we decided to do an intervention on our students. Um, uh, and what we decided to do was um, create a sort of experience, a gateway experience, that was not linked to a class, um, that was played in students' uh, uh, spare time, um, that would drive them to explore new partnerships with each other from day one, um, which, which would also allow them to have a, a kind of serendipitous encounters with alumni and media makers um, and would get them engaged in media making from, um, from the, the get-go. 
Uh, and I'm going to let Jeff talk about the sort of red uh, uh, side of things because um, what, we, what we did when we set out to make this was the, the future committee was a lot of uh, a number of faculty members, but we wanted to get some real fresh thinking in on the design process. So we brought in Jeff Watson, uh, who is a PhD candidate in our uh, interdivisional um, media arts and practice program uh, to really take the design reins. So I'm going to let Jeff talk a little bit about the intervention itself. So yeah, as it says up on the slide here, the, uh, the idea was to make a game that was really tuned to the local uh, situations and affordances and constraints that are really specific to, to the School of Cinematic Arts at USC. And, and one of the reasons we wanted to make it uh, you know, secret, we wanted to in, in some ways actually push back against that Hollywood identity of the school, uh, and, and we wanted to make it completely optional for the students. In fact, we, we actually made it uh, so secret that we, uh, when we were launching the game, we advised the faculty to, to disavow any knowledge that the game was happening at all. Uh, and, and part of the reason for doing that was we really wanted to activate the agency of the players. We wanted this to be something that belonged to them and not was something they were, they, they were being forced to do. Uh, we wanted to see what would happen if we, if we got them to really invest of themselves in the way that you, you invest of yourself when you're truly playing a game instead of just being told to play a game. Um, so, you know, Part of the launch of it involves some classic alternate reality game techniques where we, we would just sort of create these ambient clues that something was going on. Here you can see there's a flag hanging. Uh, that's the courtyard of the, uh, of the SCA, and it's kind of got some fascist overtones in this framing here, but uh, they, you know, we, we had, uh, that, that's the game flag up there, and, and gradually the students started to notice this on Facebook. What is that flag? Uh, what's going on, um, and, and we, we slipped out other little clues to them, like if they solved a little puzzle that we, we uh, deployed initially, they would, they would get this uh, instruction about what to do when you see the flag. Um, and, and eventually, if, you, if they piece together these, these clues, they would get to the game proper. And this is, this is where this is different from an alternate reality game. And really, we, we, though we, in public, we like to, it, it's easy to refer to it as an alternate reality game. It's not really like those old time alternate reality games that, that are kind of all about that mystery. At, at the core of it is, a, is an actual game that the students play. And that mystery leads to this game office that we, we had a sort of hidden office in the school. Uh, students would come there, and they would get these packets of cards. Cards. Um, here's some students showing off their cards that they've just received. And, and the, these cards really drove the whole game system. On the back of all these cards are little bits of media history, history of the school itself, really, uh, uh, again, try to link the students to that history of the school that in some ways has been erased by the multiple new buildings that George Lucas has showered upon the school. Um, and, uh, and, and, and all sorts of concepts to do with media history. Uh, but that's really just kind of the collectible side of the game. On the, on the obverse of each card, so here's the Mary Pickford card, uh, and this is a green card. And, uh, on the backs of all green cards are uh, media artifacts, and these cards basically tell you uh, a, a particular type of media artifact to create in the play of the game. So this would say, create a silent short, and you can see you get bonus points if it looks like it was actually shot before 1925. Um, there are, uh, there's another class of cards called pink cards or property cards, and those cards tell you a particular property or thing or idea to include in the project that you make. So by connecting cards together, this creates a creative prompt. Create a silent short that takes place in the SCA courtyard. Now, of course, that's a fairly simplistic creative prompt. Other cards have more connectivity on them. So the more cards that you have, the more elaborate creative prompts you can make. Make a silent short about greed in the SCA courtyard involving the student named Cody Wilder. Those orange cards identify actual other students who are uh, in the freshman cohort. And these uh, can get increasingly complex. Uh, we, some of this, the, the card combinations, which we call deals, that the students put together had upwards of 40 cards in them. Um, <coughs> so this is, you can see there's a blue card in this one as well. The blue cards are kind of like extra special challenge cards. And this really had like a, a very immediate environmental impact on the school. Uh, we would see students 
playing in the hallways, uh, assembling cards. Because you'd only get 10 cards to begin with, you would have to seek out other students if you wanted to start creating richer card combinations. And the other crucial part of that is that every time you used a card in a combination, it would decrease in value. We would actually hole punch the card like those old uh, coffee shop uh, you know, cards. And once it was uh, punched three times, it wasn't valuable in the game system anymore. Um, let me just show, there's some more students playing. This is an actual deal from uh, in the game. This is a more sophisticated deal. These are, these are actual deals that were made in the game. And the whole idea is once you create these creative prompts, in order to score points in the game, you have to actually then go out and make media based on these prompts. So this is actually a prompt for a music video. You can see the green card in the center there. That's a music video. And, and the students who made this, video, this, uh, this music video had to include all those different elements in the video that they made. And so it really created this kind of frenzy of action around the school. We had students started to discover it by word of mouth. It was really something that lined up with their existing motivations. We weren't trying to motivate them to do something they weren't already really keen on doing. These are students that have come to a media arts school to learn how to make media and think about media. And so this game really aligned with their motivations as well as with the mandates that the Envisioning the Future com Committee came up with. Um, it created a lot of sort of ancillary social effects as well. We saw the students forming into these tight collaborative groups where they would pool their cards together. In fact, a phenomenon emerged that we didn't expect called card banking, where the students would pool together all the cards that they had, and then anyone in, who's, a, who's a member of that card bank, it almost worked like a credit union, could, uh, could, could use any of the cards from that card bank as long as they credited everybody else who played, uh, who, who donated cards to the card bank on the project that they made. So this resulted in interesting uh, groups of players scoring points kind of as, as a collective. Um, Here's some, some other uh, images from the game. We like to think of this uh, game as, as, as an engine for creating grit. Uh, this notion of grit being a combination of passion and persistence. Um, you, you know, the students come with a lot of passion. We give them a channel through which to put, put that passion. And by being persistent, uh, they can uh, score points in the game. Now, by scoring points in the game, uh, actually, we, we, we have a little video. Let me show you a, a sample of the work that the students made. They said it was just a game. We were supposed to collaborate, become friends. Boy, were they wrong. Why are they calling you the master of the game? It's uh, kind of a long story. Good luck. What's the number of Laura doing here anyways? I'm looking for someone named Amber. I thought I could find her here, do you know her? You're looking at her. At first, she was just another orange card. Someone else to use. But then, something changed. There are only two winners this week. See white glasses and you walk away. I was at your party? I never said anything. Why are you blaming me? Because you're the only one who knows I was there. A deal's a deal. I made a few enemies. You don't understand. It was the only way to win. But at what cost, Carver? What have you done? They're a little self-aware. You keep keep this in mind, this was all I'm done with their own sale. equipment. They weren't allowed to use anything from the school. They had to do this by themselves. This is them reflecting on their experience of the game. We had over 120 projects like this submitted by players over the course of the game, which ran for 120 days. Um, and, and a lot of them are at this kind of absurd level of polish. I think I'm done playing games for a while. So we're running out of time, um, and we'd love to talk to you more about some of the rewards that the uh, students got, which involved mentorships, these serendipitous mentorships opportunities. 
um, with uh, famous alumni and, and uh, actually there's uh, Frank Lance, um, game designers and um, uh, filmmakers. Um, the students are, of course, extremely um, interested in sharing. Um, there, it's already really become a narrative um, as part of the, the sort of rethinking of what the school is and what it can be. And they're really fascinated about what's going to happen next year. And whenever they ask us, um, uh, you know, is there going to be another one? Are we going to do it again? Is it going to happen again? Um, all we can really say is we haven't got the slightest idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Thank you.